Hey everyone, Greta here. Um, as you can see, the background of today's video is entirely different from all the other videos that I usually do, and that's because I'm staying at a hotel right now, okay? Um, anyway, so this is a request, and we are going to do um, Tidibasen, the Firefly Pose. Uh, there are a lot of variations in it. Today, we will be targeting the arm balance version. There's actually one with the feet on the floor version, the standing version, you know, with the crazy bind where you look up and look at your butt. Uh, we will be doing the one on the arms. As for the arms, there are also a few variations. One with the legs more parallel to the floor, uh, one with the legs perpendicular, meaning shooting up at the sky. Uh, we will be targeting the latter version, which is the legs pointing up at the sky. The legs parallel to the floor version is actually very similar, um, except the entrance is a little bit different. In general, it's less intense as the legs vertically up. So, um, however, we will be talking about both um, when we actually are in that shape. In the beginning, the warm up is very similar. Um, of course, for this arm balance, um, you need to have you know quite a bit of mobility in the hamstrings and the lower back and also in the hips. Of course, um, lower abs and the arms and the shoulders is a must because it's an arm balance. So I won't be doing the, the, the warm up in the arms, in the lower abs, in the shoulders because that's more generic. Uh, I will be, however, talking more in how to you know, open up the lower body. Now for this one, if you are naturally born with a flexible lower back and flexible hamstrings, you will have a much easier time Unfortunately, that's not my body <laughs> or is that fortunate because um, that way I know how to you know, um, make it work <laughs> for more bodies. Um, I have a very tight lower back, tight hamstrings, I think tighter lower back and that causes the hamstrings to be tight. So we will be working quite a bit on how to open up or how to prepare the lower body for this particular arm balance. So let's check it out. All right, so the first shape that we are going to work on is the pyramid or the tensile stretch partial tanasan. It really depends on what name you like to refer it to. Of course, we will be doing both legs. I will be, however, just doing one side just to you know, simplify things. So you want to have the hips kind of level, so the back hip pointing more forward. This regard, you know, what you learn about the back toes, make sure that your hips are facing the front. So if that means that your toes or back toes need to more uh, point more to the front, but I'll means go ahead. And then what you want to do is really charge up the leg, the thigh, the lower abs, and then as you fold forward, making sure that it's not something passive, uh, because when we're doing the Tidibasa, we are actually fighting against gravity. So if you are doing it in a very passive way, like relaxing the muscles, chances are it's very hard for you to extend the legs up to this guy. So again, the front big toe grounding, belly hugging in, top five, the quads engaging. Just stay. I hate to say this, but since this does require a fair bit of you know, lower back and hamstring mobility, you need to go further down. Check that you're not hunching your spine, the upper body keeps lengthening. And just stay, back leg active. Stay for as long as you need in order to feel the body getting a little bit more open and warmed up for it. Second shape is the standing wide leg forward fold, Prasarita Padottanasana. For this one, you want to keep your feet fairly close together. So if this is the width of the mat, I want it to be slightly just wider and folding forward. Doesn't matter what you do with the arms as long as the belly can become really, really close to the thighs. The important element is again the tops of the thighs, quadriceps engaging, lower abs hugging in. Feeling the big toes grounding a lot more than just letting the weight dump onto the outer uh, ankles there. So the legs want to come in towards your belly button instead of just flopping out to the side. And then why is it important, you might ask, that's because when we build up for the arm balance, this is really, really important. And just stay, feeling the back of the legs lengthening, 
Not so much about the inner thigh muscles stretching. Third one is the lizard, opening up the hip as you feel the leg hugging into the body. It's not about how close to the floor you can go, it's more about whether or not the knee and the big toe could come in towards the shoulder. Now we're moving closer, closer to the floor. Uh, the wide leg seated forward fold, Upavishta Konasan. For this one, again, try to keep your feet not too wide. Um, again, this is the width of my mat. I generally have it a little bit further out. Come in. Legs are active. Where the hands are, not that important. Spine long. Breathe. Next drill, totally un-yoga, nothing about yoga, it's more about the leg lifting. Uh, when we shoot the legs up to the sky in Tidivasan, for me at least, I need to use a lot of my muscle power. So what we are going to do next is a leg lift. Setup is legs are straight, you have the fingertips on the outside of your knees, and then you want to feel the arms are pushing the floor away as you hollow the chest and your belly. Just know that when you do this action, you're not pulling the shoulders forward into the ears, rather you're more like a cat spine. And then you want to point the legs or point the toes rather. What you want to do next is you're just going to use your belly, use your thigh, use your hip flexor power to draw the leg up and then bring the leg in. If you can cross it towards the other side, that would be great. Come back to the center and then down and then do the same to the other side. Try to lift up high, feeling the leg muscle working, belly engaging. You don't want to lean back as you do this. You want to keep you know, that hollow body effect. Next shape is the compass. You don't really know that Sanskrit name for it. This one, um, have the bottom leg bends. You would have more space to uh, open up the hip. Uh, I'll do the left leg, which is your left, my right. Okay. Hug it a little bit. For me, I need to have a bit more time for my mind to get used to the shape. And then draping the leg over the tricep. For this one, you do want it to be as close to behind the shoulder as possible. And then from here, the hand will come down to the floor. The right hand will be holding onto the top of the left foot and then feel free to do a bit of pulsing, pressing that foot into the ceiling and then once everything you once you feel everything is ready, then extend the leg up to the sky. Where you look, again, yeah, unimportant. Feeling the back of your knee getting longer instead of the top of it and breathe. Yeah, I'm feeling, is the quadricep engaging? Is my leg hugging into the body? Doing the last warm up before we attempt the actual Tidipasen. This one is Kurmasen to Toys Pose. Again, there are a lot of variations for it. A lot of people tend to do it with the legs very wide, but if you are aiming for Tidipasen, I would suggest you have the legs closer together. So for me, my height is 165 cm, my legs as wide as the width of the mat. Okay, so what you want to do is just come forward, take your time, bend the knees a little bit, and then you kind of want to kind of round the spine a little bit, and then the arm will go under the thigh. And then what you want to do is when you slide, the palm is going to face up, thumb towards you, okay, same to the other side. And then once you are in place, you want to start to stretch your legs out forward, at the same time, feel the legs hugging in. Then you want to turn so the palms face the floor again with the thumbs facing away from one another. And that's Kumasin. And lengthening the spine, try not to you know, pull the shoulders towards the floor too much. Breathing. Legs hug in. That was warm up. <laughs> uh, some people need less, some people need more, maybe longer time, or maybe just more repetition of these shapes. So take it easy, we will be attempting both variations, one with the legs parallel to the floor, one with the legs shooting up at the sky. The entrance is slightly different with your legs parallel to the floor, you don't have to wrap the legs up that high. So you do want to start from a squat, okay, I'll do it on the side so you can see better. 
So from here, you are going to place the arms, or hands rather, behind and outside of the feet. Okay, you want to look forward and plant the palms down. Hope I have space. <laughs> Looking forward and then walk the legs out forward at the same time. Feel the legs hug in, butt back, chest forward, legs hug in. Imagine your big toes want to touch one another. For that previous version, as you can see, the legs are right behind that tricep. I think I have it around the midpoint of it. And I want to send the butt back towards the back wall as I extend the toes towards the opposite side of the room. So it's more horizontal. Now this coming one is with the legs shooting up at the sky. The setup will be deeper. So when I do this pose, I tend to come into a forward fold first. Okay, my feet are about shoulder width apart. And then I would turn the toes out, I would bend the knees, keeping the butt high. And then just like Kumasin, I kind of kind of slide the arms under. I have my hands pushing the shins away, notch, 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 so that the legs could be way over the shoulder. Now I'm walking forward because I don't have space. <laughs> okay, from here, feet hands down, butt down at the same time. Active, active legs. Hips down, toes to the sky. Hips down, toes to the sky. Squeeze your legs in, spreading your collarbones, and breathe. For the second version, something I forgot to mention is the collarbones. Because your legs are behind the shoulders, and when they press into the back shoulders and they hug in, chances are the front shoulders might round. Don't let that happen. <laughs> you want to actually spread your collarbones. So imagine when the legs are behind the shoulders, you're kind of in this format, kind of. So you don't collapse into that chest, you actually want to spread so that you can still feel that lift in the spine and not letting the legs, the weight of the legs really collapse in the upper body. And that's it for my sharing for today. Um, this actually took me quite a while and I still cannot do it every single day. <laughs> Uh, but then for some of my friends, they could do it like that, um, which is fine. I mean, just use this as a learning experience, you know, about your body. And for me, never knew that I have to use that much leg power in order to, you know, do this shape, which is really, really interesting. Um, but then it is also very safe for my body. I don't feel I'm gonna, you know, pull the legs out of my socket, <laughs> which I always have that feeling whenever I do leg extensions. So that's it. Give it a try. And again, don't be impatient. Give yourself plenty of time, plenty of space, and don't forget to enjoy um, along the way. All right? So take it easy. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.